In today's video, we're taking a look back at how an internet troll became a character in the Fallout universe. Now picture this. The year is 2000. The internet is still in its late infancy, YouTube doesn't even exist yet, and Interplay still owns the Fallout series. At this point, only Fault 1 and 2 have been released, two highly regarded single-player cult classic RPGs. But then Interplay announces Tactics, a spin-off from the main games that features linear squad-based combat and a multiplayer mode. Not only is it moving away from the series' roots, but it's not even being made by the original developers, and is instead being worked on by a little-known and inexperienced team in Australia called Microforte. After early previews of Tactics were shown off, there was extensive backlash from the fanbase, most notably on the forum No Mutants Allowed, one of the oldest and most infamous Fallout forums. This resentment wasn't just limited to forum posts either, fans were literally sending hate mail to the developers all the way in Australia. The majority of the complaints were due to changes in the art style, most notably the look of the game's death claws, but power armor and vehicles were also missing the retro aesthetic that defined previous entries. Others feared that future games would continue to focus on action gameplay and multiplayer, while drifting away from the RPG roots that established the series. But that would never happen. Right guys? Right? Guys? But in all seriousness, it's genuinely interesting the way that classic fans' reception to tactics mirrors the way that many modern fans reacted to both Fallout 4 and 76. The more things change, the more they stay the same. No Mutants Allowed wasn't just some random forum though, it was proudly displayed on Interplay's website and was watched by employees at both Interplay and Microforte. Some of the worst criticism came from an admin named Rochambeau Warrior, and he wasn't just some random troll either. He was perhaps THE troll of Fallout's early era. He was renowned for insulting users he disagreed with, and quote, It could be argued that Rochambeau was single-handedly the reason that Bethesda fans stayed away from NMA in the early days. That's who he was. Every time one came to the forum, he was there to light a fire under their ass." Unquote. His criticisms were so harsh that Chris Taylor, lead designer of the first game and producer on Tactics, literally made an account to drop several substantial posts on the forum refuting these claims about Tactics. He even offered to talk to Rochambeau on the phone, which is absolutely insane and something that would never, ever happen now. Chris Taylor wasn't the only developer to respond either, as the lead programmer of Tactics, Carl Burdak, did too. To put into perspective just how badly Rochambeau and other users harassed Microforte, here's how designer Dan Levin replied when asked this question during an interview. There have been people saying that Tactics isn't really a fall game. What do you say to them? Dan. I'd tell them to kiss my ass, and if they have any shit, they'll meet me in the parking lot. This persecution continued to the point that the dev team actually included an NPC named Rochambeau, a former member of the Brotherhood who's now an old crazy troll. Walk my post in a military manner. Oh, hello children. Uh, I'm sorry, Rochambeau doesn't have any candy for you. Is that a pledge pin on your uniform? If it is, will you help me fly again? My airship has fallen and it won't get up. Brothers, 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 I didn't expect to see you again, so spoon! You know that I told them that storms would be the end of the air convoy. I told them, but did they listen to me? Heck no! Fool elders exiling their own brothers over nothing for nothing! No. Scratch my back, son, like I did for my puppy. I said those airships weren't safe, but did they listen to Rochambeau? I told them that thing would fly like a Led Zeppelin. 
Then Gamoran tells me about the mime field, so I shouldn't blow my old fool head off. So I said, hey, change your name all you want, you lilac. I still changed your diapers before you were an inch in your daddy's codpiece. Do you have something shiny that you want to trade? All I have is this map of the mime field that Latham gave me. It says there are mimes buried in the field that's north of the East Building. Ha <laughs> Gamoran has his faults, but he don't take no crapola from no meddling mimes! His floating dialogue isn't any more flattering either, with lines like, This lump on my butt is where the gnomes live. You can hear them if you listen close. The new brotherhood? Pshaw. Well, back in the days. You know, son, crapping really becomes a project at my age. And finally, nervously looks both ways. You ever sleep with a ghoul? Uh, me neither. If the player kills Gamoran, the leader of the super mutants who appears in the same level, Rochambeau becomes hostile and after taking him out, you'll find that he's the only character in the game that carries a unique item called Yellow Nuka-Cola. Its description reads, A little known flavor of Nuka-Cola which is only available from the crazy naked man. It has an interesting bouquet. Despite this reference, this cold reception actually shifted the direction of the game midway through development, as lead producer Tony Oakden revealed. The unrealistic time limit problem was further exasperated by the size of the game we created. Originally, 20 single-player levels and 10 multiplayer levels seemed a reasonable size for the final game. However, when we started to get flack from the Fallout fans about the game not being true to the original, we decided to link the missions together with a world map rather than a linear mission structure. This in turn led to the inclusion of random encounters and unique encounters to add extra interest while traveling between the core missions. We produced special levels for bunkers where you could re-equip and change your squad. This works very well in the game, but increased our workload substantially. This means that around halfway through production, a world map, the Brotherhood of Steel bunkers, the NPCs that populate the bunkers, and a random slash special encounter system were all added in directly because of fan intimidation. In another interview, Tony Oakden talked about the extreme criticism Tactics received, stating, When I joined the project, I did not realize how vocal the Fall fans could be. In retrospect, I think it would have been easier to try and sell the Pope on contraception than Fallout Tactics to the Fallout fans. It's a shame because we really have tried to work within the limits of the Fallout universe. Okay, so some of the art does not have a Fallouty feel to it, but I think it's amazing we have got as close as we have, given that this is an entirely different team from the original games. I think in retrospect we should have made the power armor more retro in style, and maybe the vehicle should have been more 50s, but damn it, I like our hairy death claws. In the end, the story of Rochambeau is one of the strangest and most obscure stories in Fault history. A single fan drastically altering the development of a game, and then being immortalized as an NPC forever. <laughs>